The next thing I want to do is actually move this back out of the way because I have to come down into the part. I need to drill it. I'm going to have to bore the ID and I can't have this tail stock in my way. So we're going to go back to that part handling operation here for tail stock. And you'll notice that automatically it's at zero and it's setting it for 12 inches by default just because it knows what we done in the previous uh, stock setup when we started this part. So I'm going to go ahead and green check OK. If I zoom out, you notice that it sends it back to the 12 inches here. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and say top view and fit and bring the part close up on our screen again. So the first thing you're going to notice here, if I go to my lathe tool manager, I actually have a boring bar and a drill already located here inside of the library. So I'm simply going to green check OK. Now, before we drill the ID, I actually want to be able to see the inside of my part, not just whenever I'm looking at the wireframe. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go to my planes. And inside of my planes, we had this section view that we could look at. And you'll notice that when I go ahead and turn the section view on, it doesn't split the model. What we're going to have to do is go to our view tab and make sure under the graphic view that that section view is turned on. From here, I'm going to go back to my tool paths and we're going to go to the turning tab and under the turning tab I'm going to create a drill operation. We have our drill located here and I'm going to say drill ID for my comment and I'm simply going to go to the parameters for this drill operation. I'm going to use the depth option and select the back of the part. I don't know what the angle is of this particular drill out of the library, but I do know how much stock I got on the back face, which is a hundred thousandths. I'm simply going to say I want to pass my drill by fifty thousandths more than the hundred thousandths we had. I can green check OK, and you notice that the stock has been removed all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my top view, fit, and let's save our part. So next, we're going to go ahead and create a quick operation for boring the ID. I'm going to use the can cycles. And we're going to zoom in on this particular chamfer, as well as the ID itself. And I know i got a hundred thousands passed. I'm going to go ahead and select my boring bar. Let's say rough ID. I'm going to go to the can cycles. I can adjust my depth of cuts. I can adjust the exit distance for my R retract. And I'm also going to go into that lead in, lead out. Let's extend this lead out by, I'll say, a quarter inch. I want to make sure I go past the end of the part here. And I'll green check OK. We're going to use the extend contour to stock option. And I'll green check again. So now I've got a rough can cycle. And we're going to go ahead and create a finish can cycle for the ID. The can cycles being the one with the little recycle symbol next to them here. And you're going to see why I actually like putting comments here inside of master cam. So when I go to my can finish parameters, right off the bat, I can see the turn OD. And I can see the rough ID as well. The reason I label these is because it makes it a little bit easier to see which operation is which. Now for a finished can cycle, there's no geometry I have to select. I can simply select my rough ID, green check, and I have a finished can cycle for this particular ID. So this is one of the ways that Mastercam kind of help streamline and then speed things up. Um, if you prefer can cycles on the machine, it will definitely make it easier for you know going back and picking the finish operations. You don't have to pick no geometry. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and say top view, fit, save my part.